Alrighty. Let's see how this works out. I'm just going to test a couple of settings real quick, and I thought, well, I might as well do some work on the bench and do some cleanup. And, well, maybe catch up with you guys just for a couple of minutes. So, check this out. You guys have seen, if you follow me on Instagram or any of the other socials, you've probably seen the BFR, the full-size BFR that I'm printing from SpaceX. This is the just the shuttle portion. And I thought, well, I went to Dollar Store and grabbed a bunch of paints, and I'm trying to pretty it up a little bit. I remember I hate painting. I really do. So uh, I got some work here to do to clean this up. But I was working on that on the bench last night. The prints came out awesome. This is uh, going to be an absolute massive model. Cheers. Oh, it's stormy effects. Cheers. So we'll set that aside and see what else we can get done. Long story short, the bench is uh, getting to be a bit of a mess from uh, old components. You guys are probably like me, where you have lots of old parts kicking around that you don't want to throw out until it's time. Well, it's time to get rid of some of these. This is an old graphics card, and instead of throwing it in the junk, whew, I think I can see why maybe it got hot and failed. I remember when this thing failed, it was just a, it was a, just an abrupt failure, but the fan was still working, and if anything, that's one thing we can recover for sure. So I like saving fans from all PC stuff, because they are really, really handy in a lot of projects later on just random stuff that you want to make like when I made the uh, urban kitchen garden project I needed several fans for that for the uh, the Peltier junctions and the LED lights because the LEDs I used were crazy powerful and I needed heat sinks too well here's a great little source for a wonderful heat sink and a fan look at that that's interesting was that lined up was that actually oh yeah it was it just sits off center so the conductive disc there it's got some thermal compound and a whole lot of grungy dirt that we'll have to clean off but that we maybe not need the shroud here we could maybe ditch that but that heat sink might come in real handy because it's it's really low profile so i'm not going to bend that is there anything else on here that we can recover besides <laughs> a whole pile of dirt like we could save the caps and stuff but honestly we're never going to need them the ports probably not going to need them we could clip the the contacts off and recover the gold but i am not that ambitious and i don't know what the gold content of these newer boards would be back in the back in the when i was a kid uh, mid 80s uh, in Chinatown in Toronto not far from me there was uh, a whole industry based on uh, recovering the, the gold off of these contacts it was a uh, people would just about fight each other for them I don't see anything else of value on that I think we can bin that thing uh, I think I'll just keep the fan and I'll keep the screws and we'll save those for a future project and now I've got heat sink compound all over my fingers what a gooey mess that stuff is. Ray's here. Cheers, Ray. Um, Tarted tire cardboard box full of parts. I'm just a kid. Don't know much about, about these kind of things. But enjoy tinkering. Stormy effects, that is the way to get anywhere, truthfully. Recover components. You learn a lot just by tearing stuff down. You save the components. You never know what you're going to need them for. But honestly, you do get to a point, like I am right now, where I just have too much of this junk laying around, and I don't know when we're going to need it. I forgot to adjust some webcam settings. Come on now. Uh, give me my advanced. Come on. Let's drop that down just a smidge. There. That should be a little better. A little less washed out. Let's try that. Evie Blue's here, Ray, as soon as you get to do something, you need a yes that never fails. So the minute I bend these parts, I guarantee I'm going to need something. 
So this is an Edimax range extender. I had this in service in my home for a long time, using it to extend my Wi-Fi range out into my yard. And it was a cheap one. It was never very good. It, it, it did the job, but it was not great. But it did fail. And I'm pretty sure there's at least a few components that we can recover from this. Now at minimum, we're gonna recover the hardware. These screws, these little self-tappers, handy dandy. I always save all the hardware. You're guaranteed to be able to use those again someday. And I know at least one thing we can take from this, besides the power supply. The power supply is under the bench. That I will save. I can't remember, what was it? Five volt. So it was a, I think it's a five volt around one amp input, something like that. And we'll save that. What have we got here? Come on, where's the hidden screw? Always look under stickers for hidden screws. And I'm not seeing it, but I'm feeling it right there. I'm feeling something, either that or it's just a divot. Could be just a divot. Nope, nothing left. There we go. What else have we got? Oh, I like this. This is, okay, this is a score. This is a big score for me. I like it. Let's get the board out of here. Oh, I like this a lot. This is what I was hoping. All right, the plastic case. Mm, you could recover this, but in today's 3D printing world, truthfully, never gonna need it. In the bin. AP Tech is here. Cheers, AP Tech. Uh, Stormy said, I'm fascinated by your mechanical arm videos. I've been prototyping since before I found your channel, but now I'm really branching out because you've inspired me. I'm still waiting on a friend to pre 3D print the parts. Absolutely. I'm Well, I'm really happy to hear that, actually. I'm glad I could have been a, of some form of help. All right. Now, let's see. I don't, sorry about the, oh, the exposure's too low. Well, I think I'll just leave that exposure for now. On this board, what we have is, I don't even know what that is. Is that IR input on it? No, it's just a button, tactile button. Honestly, I'm not going to recover that because I have hundreds of tactile buttons. You can buy about a hundred of them for about three bucks Canadian. There's a couple electrolytic caps there. These things have gone through a good life. They're not bulged. You could recover those if you wanted to save them, but truthfully, I, I really don't need them. The power jack, that might be worth it if you were planning on a project where you could use that. We could suck that off the board, but I, I really don't see it. What I want is I want these connection. I want these uh, uh, SMA style connectors for the end and the antennas. So what we got out of this is we've got these nice uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi antennas with nice bendy bendy, but the one connection is remote on the board here, and that is really, really handy. So the ground is the case here, and then the center pin is remote. So we can go ahead and we can remove those, and then we'll see what we got. Soldering iron should be warmed up. I'm testing out this this fake uh, Hako, the FX951 still. Uh, you guys saw me do an unboxing here on the channel a while back. I'm still testing it and mm, I'm a little underwhelmed with it. It does function, but it has a few little quirks that I'm not a huge fan of, but no deal breakers yet. And the only way for me to test something out is to just put it into service and see how it goes. So what we'll do, let's bring that over on camera. I just switched the tip over. This is a brand new tip. So I'm, it doesn't come with a good tip either. It comes with this monster wedge tip and then these small conicals. Nothing like the normal uh, conical wedge hybrid that I'm used to. But we will, oh yeah, this lead free stuff. We'll get a good little, what temperature have I got? Why is that? Holy smokes. What? 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 Hmm. Something fishy going on there. 
All right, well, I'm not going to complain about the iron. I'm just going to use it. I, th I think that tips about 50 degrees under what it says it is, to be honest, because I should... That tip was tinned, <laughs> and that is not touching it. Now, this is... Okay, it, it is a pretty big connection plane there, and... But it shouldn't be that bad. That's pretty craptastic. Anyway, whatever. Ready soldered. Pull those off. There's a little capped on tape holding it on. That's nice. Normally it's like mastic or something holding it down, but capped on's just as good. I never did look to see why this thing failed. I don't think we're going to see it because it wasn't a hard failure. This thing would work. It would just slow down and, and fail over time. So what we can do is we can, we can draw these um, antenna connections out or you can do it the really, really easy way. Because later on, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't know whether I'm ever going to use them. So truthfully, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. So you grab the monsters. And we're not going to hurt it. And we just take and we just slice through the board. And then leave enough board on there that if you wanted to use this in a remote project, if you wanted to use this in, in a strange, I don't know, whatever, ESP8266 application or whatever, if you don't want to mount it in your own board, now you have a nifty little daughter board right here that you can solder on and use the ground plane and just hook that into your existing ground plane on your other board. And now we have the connection for the center terminal as well. And you can just hot glue this into your enclosure, stick the antenna out, and you have a nifty little 2.4 gig antenna. I don't know many, how many times I might have said 5.8 tonight. I apologize if I have, because I was doing some FPV stuff earlier. <laughs> I've been in FPV land. But there we go. Handy dandy. Hot glue that into your enclosure. Boom. We're all set. And we have another one. Handy dandy. I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to go ahead. And we can also draw it out of the board later if we wanted to. But if we don't, we have a little nifty little daughter board to use. And just that simple. There we go. Let me throw those in, in the drawer for when you need them. Handy dandy. Just as simple as that. Hardly any mess or fuss. I leave the antennas attached to them. Uh, might want to mark them what they are if you get into um, 5.8 and 2.4 mixed ones. But this one, I believe they're both 2.4. The same length of antenna. I'm pretty sure they're both 2.4. I don't think this thing had... Uh, had the multi-band capability. And then, unless you guys see something on there that I can recover, I don't see anything of value. Goes in the bin. Junk. AP Tech, hello from Malta. Steven's here. Cheers, Steven. Good to see you. John Raymond, bench the power supply isn't on. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, the bench power supply is turned off. Uh, <laughs> I turned off the power supply that runs it the other night, um, actually, because I forgot to turn it off a long time ago, and the uh, electric imp Wi-Fi module was still running, and I was still getting messages. Here's one of the last... Actually, this isn't the last one I got. I got a whole bunch of spam messages from somebody uh, goofing around, but uh, David, I assume this is probably David Watts sent that. But yeah, the I just turned the supply off. So um, I bet they're good XBs for those coax connector things. Yeah, I find the cheap ones as well under temp. Yeah, something weird going on there. Yeah, there's something. I'm I'm not going to jump to conclusions there because it's an unfamiliar board. I, I I'm not super impressed with this thing just yet. This uh, soldering iron is definitely. Well, I don't know how good the original Heiko is either, to be honest, because I don't have one. So under the feet, we've got another uh, D-Link. Just junk. Hmm. Nope, never mind. I don't know when this router failed ages ago. This thing is very, very old. 
I don't suspect there's much to recover in it, but you never know. We'll take a quick look, see if there's anything we want. You can actually even save the rubber feet if you want. Sometimes they degrade over age, but if you just need little rubber feet for a project, well, you could save those, throw them in the bin. Just depends on how, <laughs> how much stuff you like to save. Definitely, we will save the hardware though. Handy dandy, goes in the screw bin. And I don't know whether I'll save the antennas from this one because honestly, I have a pile now. Only two screws? What? I can't be right. There's gonna be more under the sticker. Nope, really. We, okay. beauty of taking this apart is we don't have to care. <laughs> if we harm anything. That feels like nothing happened with those two screws I just took out. <laughs> oh well, this is what you come for the live stream, right? To watch me struggle. Nothing wrong with that. Be different if you had this stuff apart every day. Okay, I see. So these clampy clampies around the side actually looks like they actually bind the case together somewhat and they are brittle with age. This thing is ancient old. Okay, there are clips in the corners. Let's start with this one. There we go. Done. What can we recover? So this antenna the center antenna, this looks like a mixed frequency one. This actually has, uh, geez, I forget the term. The, you guys can put it in the chat. Remind me the style of connector that is. Oh, I always forget those little guys. So there's quite literally not much to getting that apart. It's just set in and I don't have my sockets handy, but we can, of course, use the correct tool for the job. Go ahead and take the newt, the newt off. And we'll recover that just because, well, why not? Because there's nothing to it. It's literally just clipped into place. And you never know. We might need that. I don't even know where the antenna is for this. So this is, looks like RP of SMA. And then whatever that connection is that I always forget what that little guy is. You can, on the microscope, that little guy on the microscope. All right, what else we got? Don't need the case, junk. Feels good to clean up the shop. Although we are making a little bit more mess, it will store a heck of a lot better on the shelves and in the bins compared to all this stuff. Um, Stormy effects is cutting him past some bottle cut manage blade into hand. Yeah, not good. Not uh, MCX M M C X. Thank you, Stephen. Of course, you would know what that is. I always think M C X, but I think you're right. It is M M C X when they're that small. <laughs> Lighter and a multi tool. <laughs> oh, you guys crack me up. All right, what else have we got? So, well, there's a choke or an inductor. Uh, that might be worth saving, but there, well, there's two of them. A couple of ceramic caps. A bunch of LEDs if you really wanted to recover them, but at the price of LEDs. Mm. Another a nice inductor down there. Another inductor there, another inductor there. I don't see anything else worth recovering. Bin it. So those, the bin that off camera will eventually go to uh, uh, hazardous waste, the local e-waste recycler. Now I don't expect much from this one. We've got a couple of power supplies here. This is just a five volt USB power supply and I got another one because it came with this nifty little device. This was a, a Kickstarter I backed years ago, Equizo Smart TV. It ran an Android operating system 
and it really sucked. It was uh, like Gen 1 of the smart TV uh, HDMI sticks. It was uh, insanely slow, functionally useless per, pretty much, but whatever. It was a Kickstarter and whatever. I got a little bit of use out of it. I don't, I don't even know whether it's going to be worth trying to break into it without hurting oneself on live. Let's see if the case pops apart or whether they sealed it very well. Nope, they didn't seal it very well. So, as I kind of suspected, we have our Wi-Fi antenna. It's actually better than I expected because this thing had horrible Wi-Fi re reception. And a lot of passives, a daughter board. These are... Oh, nifty. Connector does come apart. Really cool little connector. Let's look at that on the microscope. That's actually really, that's nicer than what I, that's way nicer than what I expected. That's a nifty little header and looks really well done. The quality is a lot better than I expected. This thing really performed like crap. <laughs> and there's the other side. That's nifty. That's a lot of connections in the passives, all of the resistors, a couple caps, lots of good stuff. But I don't see anything worth recovering under the tape we have the brains and more brains so graphics and main cpu probably i don't see anything worth recovering one of these one of those will be a wi-fi chip actually the wi-fi chip might be on this board these this is very old very very old Really nicely made, but what do you guys think? I don't see anything worth recovering in there. You could keep it, but for SMD stuff, you're never going to be able to find the component off of that that you need, truthfully. So, realistically, let's bin it. All right, what else we got? What else we got? I uh, see a clock crystal and Stephen confirmed, yeah, MMCX. Gotcha. Okay. So this is a LCD monitor. These were, this is one of two that was in the Learjet flight simulator running my console, running my navigation and maps. It worked beautifully for many, many years. This one actually cracked somehow. I know, I don't even know how it cracked. I didn't even do that. It's got a stand. Mm. I don't need another. Well, actually, we probably could. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Does this slider come out? If this slider comes out... I might just save that stand. That might be really handy for like a like one of the projects that I'm thinking about doing that everybody's doing lately, these YouTube sub counters and social media monitors and stuff. Sometimes it's hard to have something nice. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. That so that gives us our our plate and the thumb screw to set it in this nice little stand that sits on your desk. That might be quite handy for a project because it's kind of a finished component. And then this can just be screwed right onto the back either way. You could clip this off and then you have your nifty stand and it's a ball mount, like not the best of ball mounts, but what do you guys think? I think I think I might just save that. That I know it'll just sit in the junk pile forever, but at least I can see a practical use because it's I think we could 3D print this, but making the ball mount and everything with this nifty little tripod, it is a quarter course tripod mount, I think, too. Might be handy dandy. I don't know. Let's and I think you can do it two ways too. Anyway, let's just tighten that back up on there. Let's set it aside. Yeah, let's keep it. Why not? 
I, I guess I should decide whether I can fix the monitor first, but I'm nearly positive that I can't. The last one failed in, uh, it was right in the H, or not the HV section, but the, the backlight supply section, and I was unable to fix it. It, uh, it could, I could even, I even found the IC that was, it, it was actually burning hot and would overload pretty, or not overload, it would cease to function pretty quickly and it was clear the temperature was way, way hot. As usual, under the sticker is to screw. So I just decided to bin the last one. I guess it's possible I could have fixed it, but this one with the cracked screen, I don't, I really don't see that we're gonna have any value for it, but we'll take a quick look. Let's see if we see anything. There we go. What do we got? So this will be for our backlight system. This is the driver board that was bad in the other one that I traced it down to. This is up here that you can't see because I'm talking off camera. This will be for the touch screen. This is a touch screen monitor. And yeah. I don't think I'm really gonna try and recover much. We could recover the LED. Actually, that's kind of looks like. Yeah, there we go. Never mind. There's the illumination driver. Jeez, it's been so long. There's the illumination. This is a high voltage supply, so this is a, a cold cathode, probably, I guess. And we could recover that and use it, perhaps, but I suspect that there's a problem. Got it off camera in here. So I don't think we'll bother it. But what we will take immediately, because these are super handy for projects. Come on, Eric, on camera. Let's try on camera. There, let's try on camera. We'll grab these wires. Super, super handy. Uh, you can just pop these out. Um, just use your screwdriver or your X-Acto blade and go in here and just pop the connection. And then you can reuse the conductors as either a ribbon or uh, single conductors. You can just peel them apart. Super handy. Definitely don't throw those out. This high voltage supply wiring, really nice silicone. Uh, it is a, a higher voltage supply, so it's pretty good, pretty good wire. We could save these ribbons, but honestly, I, I've never found a use for one ever again after I took something like this apart. So we'll grab these conductors. We can use those wires, definitely. Really nice wires, I like these. And in some cases, you can even reuse these connections. In either the most recent or the most upcoming mailbag, I got some, some headers that, uh, that we could actually use these to plug into. And then we've got some speakers. Let's see if those are glued down or not. If they're not glued down, let's recover them. If these clampy clamps, if nothing else, we'll take the screws from the clamps. And we will save those. I think I remember the last one was, this looks glued down. Yeah, that looks glued down. <laughs> well, that's the end of that. But let's see if there's any hope of recovering the other one. I have tons of PC speakers and stuff. Yeah, it is glued. It's pretty heavily glued alongside, so we can try the other one. See if we can get it off. Save one out of two. Again, we're not out anything with damaging this. She's toast and a broken screen to boot, so... Some gooey glue. No. Yeah, yeah, we got it. We got it. Didn't hurt the edge. There we go. We can save it. There we go. I'll have to measure the impedance of that and see what it is, but it might be handy for a project. Is this one? Yeah, I'm, magnet is so weak on these, it won't even stick to the bench. So, junk. What else we got? Anything of value, we could take some connectors. You take a VGA connector if you want, headphone audio style, 3.5 millimeter jacks if you wanted them. I have lots of those that I got from eBay. S-Video connection, 
I don't see anything else there. What do you guys think? Anything that you grab off of that? I don't see anything. I say she goes for recycle. Catch up on the chat real quick and see if you guys saw something I didn't. Done. Into the bin. We're making some room now. Speakers maybe, yeah, for sure. All right, what else we got? This is whew, ancient, ancient. This is an old picture frame. Uh, one of these ones that used to put an SD card into and display pictures on. <laughs> it was not a good one. So I don't, uh, I don't hold out a lot of hope that there's anything of value in here, but whatever, we'll take a look. As no matter what, we're recycling the stuff in the end. And I'll get some nice screws out of the deal. Maybe, maybe a speaker out of this one. Looks like it has two speakers. Although I do have lots of speakers now. There comes a limit when you just gotta, you just gotta chuck things. All right. Usually with bezels like this, usually they're snap fit. Sometimes you got to get a bit aggressive. All right. So there is a nice rotational pot. It might be a variable capacitor. I'm guessing for volume control. It's a really chintzy looking one. We could, well, let's recover it. That one's easy. We don't even have to use a soldering iron or anything. It's just screwed into the case, which makes it kind of kind of interesting to me. Here, I'll get you a better camera angle here in a second. That we might be able to use it in a project because the fact that it's on its own daughter board. There we go. Yep, we'll save it. I have to check that. They can't even tell what that is. I'm pretty sure it's just a normal pot, but we can measure it and find out. Okay, that side of the case, junk in the bin. The shiny bits. Yeah. SD card slot. Hmm. <clears throat> Got lots of SD card slots. The screen worked on this. A person could probably recover it. There's a nice switch. There's no battery supply or anything in here. And underneath that board is strictly just the LCD. And I remember the resolution on this was insanely low. This is very old. I... Wait a minute. I thought I saw speaker grills. I did. Those looked like speaker grills. This thing didn't have audio after all. Must have been the next model up that did. It's got a temperature sensor. Looks like probably temperature and humidity sensor here. You could recover those, but honestly a DHT11 or DHT22 costs nothing now and I have lots of those too. So I don't see anything worth saving here. We've got 13500 crystal, 13.500, so probably 13 megahertz. No, it can't be 13 megahertz, is it? I don't even know. I don't see anything. Bin it. What did we get out of that? Did we get anything out of that? Just some screws. That was a rip off. All right, I think that's it. Other than, got a power supply for one of the routers. And this is all the goodies. This is the loot after the fun arts and crafts time where we save lots of goodies. And then, yeah, handy dandy. I'll keep that stuff, we'll file it away. I keep things in the drawers, um, I keep these. Oh, where's my goodies? I just use these drawers that go like a wall-mounted unit 
and I usually label them across the front, but this one is self-explanatory for all the mega amounts of all different style screw oddball stuff. This is strictly from disassemblies I've done and just recovered hardware. Not the easiest thing to find what you're looking for, but heck, it's at least you have the option when you need it. You have this pile here and some, I even save these brackets from time to time and stuff. Might be handy. All right, guys, that's enough for tonight. Just wanted to test out this uh, new streaming configuration. Hopefully the audio and the video came across even better than before. I'll see you guys with a brand new video tomorrow. Another mailbag, I think. And then next week I'm going to try and have up either my printer review or a uh, full ESP8266 uh, alarm system project that I've been working on for months and months. Good luck uh, in all your projects, guys. Have a good night. Cheers.